This is cross filtering in Streamly. In this video, I will show you how to use a Streamly component to get back the list of selected points in a plotly chart. Then we look at how to operate with Streamly's session state and experimental rerun to store the selected data points in a global variable that you can reuse from anywhere in the app to update the earlier plots. In those difficult times, it's essential for a waiter to serve the tables that gave the biggest tip. I recorded the information about each tipping table I waited, and would love to know the best days, time and size of tables to work on to get the highest margin. <coughs> Load the dataset from the Plotly data package. This returns a pandas data frame with the tips. But I'm not an accountant. I don't get any insights from a table with a lot of numbers. Enter one of my very favorite visualization libraries in Python, Plotly Express. Let's build three interactive Plotly Express charts on the dimensions that I want to study. The first one is a scatter plot of the total bill versus tip. Build a heat map of the size of the table to serve versus the time of serving. We hope to catch lots of small tables for lunch that serve big tips. And I want to see how active the restaurant is per day. This is not very kind to the eye. To improve this, I prepare two streamlit columns to sort the plots in. The most important on the left because it deals with actual money and the two smaller auxiliary plots on the right. I want to analyze that zone of data there. It looks like a low bill and a good tip. Select data points on a plotly chart using the box or lasso selection. Nothing happens. It does not return any information to Streamlit. We need to replace that plotly chart call because the, the only thing it does is render the chart on the app. And I want to use a component that embeds the plot and yet returns the selected or clicked information. And whenever you feel you're missing on a Streamlit feature, check out the Streamlit Components Tracker, which is full of third party plugins to add web features to Streamlit. You should find out a component Streamlit Plotly events, which displays the Plotly chart and returns the event data. Yeah, yeah, this one, so go and pip install it. For each plot, replace ST Plotly chart with Plotly events and store each result in an independent variable. Maybe we should take a minute and think about how we're going to use this selection to filter out the pandas data frame at the start of the script. If you write down the result of the selection of your scatter plot to the app, you will observe a list of x, y, and point index fields. Quiz, which one do you think will be the most useful to filter our data frame? Well, the point index, it should correspond to the index of the rows where the selected points to filter are. Hmm, good logic. But no. For each selection of points, we'll have to actually build our own row identifier so that it can be used to filter the necessary rows in the data frame. For the day selection, we get a list of JSON, each containing the day in the X value. So with a well-placed set comprehension, we can extract the day as a single list of one element. For the heat map plot, we're getting the size as X and the time as Y. So I just concatenated both as a unique identifier of size versus this time. We'll use the same technique for total bill versus tip. I'm just making sure to multiply by 100 to account for the money sense and then making those integers to get rid of the decimals. But remember, the data frame is at the top of the script, yet your, your filters and row identifiers are still at the bottom of the script. So how do we push back those up? Anytime you want to store information that you want to reuse from anywhere in the app, you use session state. That, that's basically the secret to being a Streamlit master. Don't forget to initialize state at the start of your app. I'm going to name them the same as the variables, with a query suffix. If you're lazy, you can use for loops for this. Then store the return selection in a dict that makes it easier to browse through the keys and override the values in state that have got the same prefix. For loops for the win. Add a check to see if the selection is different from what is stored in state. And if that's the case, it means your user has selected a new set of points. 
Okay, wait, I need a recap. We load a data frame. We display plot from our data frame. Each time a user selects something on those plots, we get back the selected data point. We build row identifiers that we help filter the data frame, store those in states, and if we detect the values have changed, we rerun the app. Row identifiers are inside states. It's now time to reuse them to filter the data frame. To apply the row identifiers we created, we also need to create those on the original data frame. The day column already exists, so add a column with the concatenation of size and time, and another one for 100 times total build to 100 times the tip. Time to remove the rows we did not select. I chose to build a unique selected column that will be true if the row is selected by any filter and false otherwise. Apply an easing query for each row identifier to update the selected column to false if it's not in the query. Four loops for the win. Now our data frame has a selected column. We can use this to change the color or the opacity of unselected points in our plotly chart by adding it as input to the function. You can also choose to change the order of some labels and then... Okay, quick note by the way... By the way, quick note, I had to add a key argument to the plotly render so that when you change the plotly figure input by changing the color of some points, the figure updates. If you want to reset all selection filters, you can change that key on a rerun. For example, add a counter in session state, add a button at the end of the script and on a click of the button, run a callback that changes that counter. And there you have it, the destroy anything button. This example is not totally perfect because I would love to be able to reset all the selection filters by clicking anywhere in the plotly chart or by selecting a label or clicking on a label or even using my own set of plotly events. Well, I got you covered in this next video where we build a streamlit component that uses the JavaScript version of plotly to embed a plotly chart and react to our own set of custom plot events. Ah, shoot, I can't work on Thursday. Quick note, by the way. It's kind of like a model view control thing, right? Hey, are you paid to do my job? Huh?